character analysis and film essays are always good, but every now and again it's important to just go back to the basics and scare the pants off your audience with some good old-fashioned terror. And that's what we're doing today. Happy Halloween. Now, this isn't a specter from my childhood, so I never got the opportunity to have nightmares from this cartoon, but I'm going to remedy that by sharing this with all of you in the hopes that I can traumatize you all with just how freaky and bizarre this movie is. Have you ever wondered what would happen if Disney kept to the script of the original Grimm's fairy tales when they made those Renaissance movies? Like how in the original Little Mermaid, Ariel is cursed to never be able to see a child misbehave or else she can't get into heaven? Or how in the original Hunchback of Notre Dame, all three main characters die and Phoebus is evil? And yeah, I know Hunchback's not a Grimm's fairy tale, but you get the point. Well, that question is answered with the following feature presentation, Teeny Tiny and the Witch Woman. But before we begin, you know what's even scarier than witches? Getting your data stolen by sneaky ISPs. And that's where our sponsor can help. Atlas VPN offers protection against hackers, ISPs, and other threats by running your data through an encrypted tunnel away from prying eyes. They also protect you from malware and keep your devices running smoothly. But they also offer a ton of other services. Atlas VPN can also unblock content for streaming services so that you can watch movies and shows that are unavailable in your country. They also help you to get the best deals on those services and more, and beyond that, you can get the best deals on hotels and airlines. But it gets even better. Right now, Atlas VPN is offering a sale of 85% off for their Black Friday sale, meaning you can get three years of their service for just $1.70 a month. That's six months for free. Just use the link in the pinned comment below, as well as the description, to gain access to this amazing deal. Oh, and if you're worried about having to buy multiple subscriptions, worry not. Atlas allows you to protect all of your devices with just one subscription. So keep your data yours and get Atlas VPN for just $1.70 during their big Black Friday sale. Okay, so to ease confusion about my earlier points, this film was not made by Disney. This film was made by Weston Wood Studios, who you've probably never heard of, but boy oh boy have they been busy. These guys have been making content for over 70 years, and yet there's a bizarre lack of any information about them anywhere, which in my view just adds to the spooky atmosphere. Tiny Tiny and the Witch Woman was based on a book by Barbara Walker, and when I say based on, you'll see what I mean as we continue. And once we're done, I'll bring everybody back around and give you some trivia about this old story that only a bona fide nerd such as myself can bestow. So we begin with this freaky image of these floating grandma hands that harkens in my mind to the opening of The Thief and the Cobbler, as the narrator tells us an old story. Once there was... Twice there wasn't a family of three brothers. And right out of the gate, what is this, Grandma? Once there was, and twice there wasn't, a family of three brothers? Well, what happened in the interim? This sounds like the ramblings of someone who looked Cthulhu directly in the eye. Well, let's continue. So the three brothers are named Big One, In the Middle, and Teeny Tiny, because their parents despise them. Now... With it in mind that this was meant for toddlers, um, I will just allow this to play out without commentary. Every day, their mother said, You can play anywhere in the village, but do not go into the forest. Your granny says a witch woman lives there, where the trees are darkest. She eats little children and uses their bones to make a fence around her house. Those kids are going in those woods. So the kids go into the woods to play, knowing there's a child-eating witch that lives there. And the forest starts to change around them, and they get lost, because the trees are alive and trap them. And then Teeny Tiny climbs up a tree to try and see the way out, and uh, we get this. Come in! Come in, my children! Wait! 
whispered Teeny Tiny, remember what our granny said. Oh, that can't be the witch woman, said Big One. She's so kind to ask us in. Yeah, you're probably right there, Big One. There's not a lot of hints that anything's off here. I mean, other than the green monster hand and the human skulls outside of the house. So the kids go inside the house, but not before we get this line. And smell the good dinner I have for you. And they eat it. If you're wondering, hey, did this movie for toddlers just have a scene where a witch feeds children the flesh of other children? And the answer is yes, that did just happen. Auntie, he asked, what do you keep in that cage? Cage? In my cage? Oh, sometimes I keep stray dogs. Teeny Tiny, just let your siblings win their Darwin Award and run. So, the kids are told by the witch to go to bed, and the siblings still remain credulous as to whether or not this witch is a witch. So, Teeny Tiny tells the witch that he can't go to sleep until he eats an egg, because his mother always makes him one. So the witch gives him an egg, but then he doesn't go to sleep. And then he tells the witch that his mom makes him popcorn and raisins. And then he goes to sleep. So the witch gets some popcorn and raisins, and then he eats it, and he doesn't go to sleep. And yes, this is as tedious to watch as it is to listen to. But finally, he says to the witch that his mother gets him water from the well, in a sieve, and then he can go to sleep. And the witch doesn't seem to have any problem with that, because... Luckily, everyone in this film's world is an idiot, so she goes to get him some water in a sieve. And if anybody doesn't know what a sieve is, by the way, this is a sieve. Uh, but it gets worse, because the witch says this. Oh dear, my magic object. Better to leave them here safe than to lose them outside in the dark by the well. So then... The kids finally realize that this witch is indeed a witch after they notice that the fence around her house is made from the bones of children, and so they run away. And this is where the story becomes an outright comedy. So the witch runs after them, and they throw the soap, which turns into a big mountain of suds, and so she has to run around it. And then they throw the needle, that turns into a mountain of needles. And finally, they throw the dagger, which cuts the landscape in half, and the witch is stuck on the other side of the village. And the kids get home safe, and that's the end of it. Now, obviously, I understand this is a film made for children, but there is something about this movie that kind of gets to me a little bit. I think it's just mainly the fact that it's such a an otherworldly atmosphere, I guess, in that, you know, obviously I was joking earlier when I said that this is based on the book because they literally just, like, use stills from the book, and it's not really true animation, but it kind of lends itself to a bit of a bizarre, like I said, almost otherworldly feel to the fact that the characters don't move like you're used to seeing animated characters move. Obviously, the audio effects on this witch are absolutely, the, you know, I don't know, it just sounds like she's straight from hell or something. Um, and just uh, the fact that you have things like a witch feeding children the flesh of other children. I don't know, to me, that um, that's that's something else. So, like I said, obviously I'm aware this one wraps up pretty lame, but I just want you to imagine being one of the four-year-olds watching this in your school library for a moment. Uh, I promised you trivia, and I will not disappoint. You might be saying to yourself, for shame, I already know what this story is based off of. It's the tale of Hansel and Gretel, but you'd be wrong, because it's actually based on the Baba Yaga, which in turn inspired the story of Hansel and Gretel. The Baba Yaga is a mythical character who it's not entirely clear whether she's a witch or a spirit or something else, but she has iron teeth and she eats children. And my favorite bit of info about her is that she has a house that walks on chicken legs, which is just perfect. But she also has a fence bed at a bones, which probably should ring some bells by now. The main difference between these two stories is that instead of soap, a needle, and a dagger, the kids just steal a comb. And when they throw it, the comb turns into a forest that the Baba Yaga gets lost in. So there you go. 
There's some good old-fashioned for shame trivia for you. I've left a link to this short in the description so you can watch it yourself if you want. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this little spooky episode of the For Shame Chronicles. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will begin doing weekly content from here on out. Uh, the next video will be a lot longer than this one, and it will be on the uh, Netflix show, the little anthology they made called Love, Death, and Robots. I'm going to be doing a super long series wherein I will go through each and every one of the individual shorts and review them, but it'll be split into three different videos, one for each season. So I'm looking forward to that one. I think that's going to be a really fun one. And in any case, like the video if you liked it, or dislike the video if you didn't like it, and subscribe for more. That's all for now.